Hello viewers, how are you all? Welcome to today's class. Your teacher is Roger Mikshira. We'll be taking you through history, form four, and the topic of discussion is Commonwealth. And today we'll get to look at the principles and characteristics of Commonwealth nations. Now, and again, remember, in the last lesson, we did introduce what Commonwealth is, and also we did look at the members of Commonwealth. Now, the station you're watching is a limited TV. You're always learning Station, welcome all and let us learn. Now learners, what do we expect at the end of the lesson? We expect that we're able to state the principles of Commonwealth, or rather those guidelines that guide the Commonwealth, and also get to state the characteristics of Commonwealth states. Now welcome all and let us learn. Now at first, let us get to the principles, or rather ideals of the Commonwealth. Now one thing you must understand, uh, that there is a conference that was held in Singapore in the year 1971. This is the, com this, 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 this is the conference that had the heads, all the heads of states, of Commonwealth. And in that conference of Singapore 1971, they set out guidelines, they set out ideals and principles to guide the Commonwealth. And remember at first we did say that Commonwealth has got no constitution. It doesn't have a late constitution. So these are some of the ideals and principles that they set down in the Singapore Conference of 1971. And as we have said, it was attended by heads, all the heads of state of the Commonwealth government. Now, in that conference, the members agreed that the organization should have laid down ideals and principles, right? It must have principles. What guides them, right? Now that they didn't have a constitution, what guided them? Now, one of the principles we have is that the Commonwealth members believe that international peace and order was important, right? This, that's the first ideal or other principle. They believe that it was essential for them to have international peace and order right, for the purpose of security and development of humankind. So that was the first principle, international peace and order for the security of humankind. And also, they stated, they, they, they laid down another principle whereby they emphasized liberty, right, of the individual and equal of all regardless of home and state. So equality, right, they ensured that there is equality, liberty, right, no another state was under uh, the colonial uh, denomination, Good. So they, there was that issue of liberty and equal treatment in regardless of home and race, right? Meaning you are treated equal. Someone from Uganda, someone from Britain, they're all treated equal. Then also they, f they, they opposed all forms of colonial domination and racial discrimination. Good. This one was, w was well spelled out during that 1971 conference, whereby they ensured that all forms of colonial domination and racial discrimination was done away with. Right? And essentially, the issue of, colo uh, of colonial domination, remember, they wanted these states to, to be independent, right? They wanted these states to be independent, and that is why they always pushed for independence of these states. Another principle, the final principle that the, 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 the heads of state laid down is that they believed that international cooperation was an important factor in pro promoting world peace, right? And not only be achieved through international relations, but also th as in, in the Commonwealth. So they believed that when these uh, states get to cooperate, they will get to achieve. So when the states get to cooperate, they are promoting the world peace and security through these interna international associations. Now, class, we have already looked at the principles that laid down that, that were laid down during the Singapore conference. These are the principles, these are the ideals that guided the Commonwealth. Now, let us get to look at what are some of the characteristics. How can you identify that this is a Commonwealth state, right? What are, are, some, of, are some of the distinguishing va uh, factors or features that get to distinguish a Commonwealth state and a, 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 a non-Commonwealth state? One of the characteristics is that members maintain cultural ties, right? For instance, they participate in Commonwealth Games, and, uh, uh, and, and, and we have seen a number of um, Commonwealth Games that have taken place. For example, in the year 2018, 2018, we had the Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, right? The Commonwealth in Gold, Co in, in Gold Coast, right? Now, these are some of the Commonwealth Games, and Kenya, we have featured more in these Commonwealth Games, right? Talk of the, the 10,000, talk of the 5,000 meters, right? Talk of the 1,500, 800 meters of Rhodesia, right? We have really taken lead in the Commonwealth Games. Look at that, 
right? The cultural ties. Now, this is when all these Commonwealth states come together, they get to share in terms of games. And in that sharing, they are maintaining their cultural ties. Then what about education, right? What about education? And we get to realize that the Commonwealth members, they cooperate in the field of education. For example, we have got education, Commonwealth education programs, right? The issue of common, co Commonwealth, uh, the learning programs, right? We have the Commonwealth scholarships. Those are some of the programs that have assisted developing nations in, uh, in the field of education. Then also, they get to recognize the Queen of England as the head of Commonwealth. And the Queen of England is very, very, very much respected, right? She is highly respected, and she is taken as the Queen of uh, of England. So she is the leader. She is the head of the Queen of uh, of Commonwealth. And as you know, for now we have got Elizabeth II, who who is the Queen of England. And also, the the members have a common military tradition, which is based on the. So, sorry, they, they, they have a common military tradition based on the military system of Britain, right? They have the same military system, and also they use English, right? Look at Kenya, they use English. Look at uh, Uganda, they use English. Look at Britain, it is English, right? Look at Canada, right? So their primordial uh, language is English. So the members get to use English as a common language. When, wh whenever they are having the heads of, uh, heads of state meetings, they use English as the, uh, as the first language of communication. Then class, finally, the members share common democracy in institutions. For example, talk of the parliaments, right? Talk of system of governance, right? Uh, and, and you saw recently, Kenya, Kenya wants to amend the constitution to make sure that they fit the, the British kind of parliamentary system so all these countries they share the same common democracy institutions and i've given you an example is the parliamentary system of governance now class now that we have looked at the principles and also the characteristics of commonwealth games uh, commonwealth states can you get to look at this activity can you get to discuss five principles of the commonwealth and also get to state the characteristics of the commonwealth nations and for your uh, for your reference get to use evolve world history and government and as always this is a limit tv your favorite learning channel where you get to watch and learn get in touch with us via contact address it is there where you get to watch more more videos and more lessons for our classes thank you and let me see you in the next class